the natural world is full of lots of beautiful colours. Some of them are caused by pigments and some of them are caused by structural colours. Structural colours is when light interacts with microstructures on the surface of things like peacock feathers or beetles or butterflies and that causes some of the most beautiful, vibrant, iridescent colours that you find in the natural world. I'm Rox, I'm a PhD student at the University of Cambridge and I joined the Bio-Inspired Photonics Group with my supervisor Silvia Vignolini who studies structural colour in plants. Sylvia was collaborating with plant scientists at Kew Gardens on lots of different iridescent plants when they noticed the polya berry, which had retained its colour and really stood out as being really bright and shiny, even after a hundred years. We've got some here that are decades old, and amazingly the colour is still as bright as it was. This one is just from a few years ago, and you can see how the leaf has completely decayed and the colour's gone compared to the fruits, which are just as bright and strong as they were. To understand this berry a bit more, we need to know a little bit more about structural colour. So all structural colour has the same basic principles. As light comes in and hits a surface, some bit of it is reflected, and the other part passes through the surface. The reflected lights interfere with each other, enhancing some colours and destroying others. The angle at which the light hits the surfaces determines which colour is reflected, so some butterflies look really bright from some angles and completely dark from another. In the outside of the polyberry, there are cells which have layers really like this. They're made by cellulose fibres, which are all stacked with a slightly different angle to each other, which makes it go around in this helix pattern. As the light comes in, it interacts with those layers, it's reflected and interferes to reflect bright blue light. Because of the spiral structure of the cellulose fibres, the light that's reflected also moves in a spiral way. That can happen either left-handed or right-handed. You get these structures in lots of different places in nature, but it's basically always left-handed. What's amazing about the polya fruit is that it has cells that are left-handed, but also cells that are right-handed. That's really rare, and it's why it's so exciting to work on them. At the same time as looking at these structures in nature, other people in the bio-inspired photonics lab have been working out how to make these structures artificially, just using cotton and paper. This process starts by grinding up filter papers made of cotton fibres into cotton linters and compacting them. So next is the hydrolysis stage, where sulfuric acid is added to extract the crystal parts from the fibres. Various purification methods are used to filter out all of the non-useful parts, and then these tiny crystalline rods are dispersed in water. The suspension is then allowed to evaporate slowly in a dish and self-assembles to form a structured film. The end results are these films, which can be made in any colour by changing the distance between the layers. The films are biocompatible and biodegradable and edible, and we don't know exactly what they will be used for, but they've obviously got applications in food and in cosmetics and in high-level security like the holograms on banknotes. I love understanding the incredible things that nature does, and I think it's amazing that physics can help us do that. I really love working with the people in my lab to directly mimic things that nature does, and I just think that's amazing.